fit test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1. You will hear part of a telephone conversation between a job seeker and a recruitment agent. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Yes, so that's Janet Thompson. Would you like me to spell it? If you wouldn't mind, thank you. Just the surname, please. No problem. It's T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. Great. Now, Janet, before we go through the openings I have here in front of me, might I just take a few more details to complete your profile on my system? Of course. What would you like to know? Well, let's start with your email address, please. OK, janthompson at hort.net. I see. Is that Jan as in J-A-N? No, that wasn't available. I had to make do with J-A-N-N. Here, let me spell it for you again, just to be sure. J-A-N-N-T-H-O-M-P S-O-N, at hort.net. Much obliged. And could I ask, do you have your referee details to hand? Yes, what do you need? I need one work reference and one character reference from a friend or colleague. OK, for a work reference, there's Jane Foote. She's my former boss at Bermuda Girls School, head of English. OK. My personal referee is Monica Carbody. Mon and I have been best friends since we met in Bermuda in 1991, when she was Deputy Head of English under Mrs Foote. Perfect. And you mentioned, of course, that you're an English teacher, but are there any additional subjects you're qualified to teach? Yes, I have a diploma in special needs, and I can also do history to GCSE level. Very good. Before listening to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Do you think I stand a good chance of finding something? Oh, better than good. In fact, we have some positions we can offer you today. You see, it's not so difficult to find a temporary role. Tell you the truth, there are plenty of them around, but getting a permanent position will prove a little more trying, though. Would you be prepared to take up a position short term? Of course, anything that pays. Excellent. Well, there are three positions that I can offer you right now. The first is a teacher of English in LaSalle School. I'm sure you know it, right in the city centre. Yes, near where I live, actually. Even better. Well, it's a six-month contract, and the very attractive thing about this role is that the head of English at LaSalle will, if she's satisfied with your performance after six months, offer to make you a permanent member of staff. Wow, that's food for thought. It certainly is, bearing in mind what I said before about how hard it is to find a permanent role. The second position I have to offer you is in a school near Chelsea. It's called the Chelsea Free School. Are you familiar? I can't say that I've heard of it. Well, this contract is for one year, which is a lot better, looking at it from a short-term job security perspective, than the first role I mentioned. But you also have to realise that you are a temporary replacement for a female teacher who has taken maternity leave. There is no prospect of the position being made permanent. I see. I have one other vacancy at the minute, though I doubt you'll find it quite so appealing. It's situated in rural Cambridgeshire. I'll spell that just in case you want to take it down. C-A-M-B-R-I-D-G-E-S-H-I-R-E. -E. And the school simply goes by the name Cambridge, though it's not in any way related to the other more well-known establishment of the same name. I was just going to ask that. What a lovely location, though, eh? Yes, but there's a catch. It's only a six-week contract to cover for someone on extended sick leave. 
I see. Well, I guess that's ruled out then. What sort of sort of salary can I? That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a radio interview about an upcoming fair. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fourteen. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions 11 to 14. Good afternoon and welcome to City Hour, the radio show that brings you all the latest information about events in and around our city. Today we have with us Cynthia Smith, who is heading up this year's City Fair. Cynthia, would you start by giving us some of the basic information about the fair? Where will it take place this year? I'm glad you asked that question because I know most people will be expecting the fair to be at the fairgrounds as usual, but we've had to change the location this year due to some construction work. You know, they're building the new high school in that neighbourhood and they've been using the fairgrounds as a place to store construction materials. So we've moved the fair to City Park, which I think is a wonderful location. Yes, that will be a great place for the fair. I understand that the fair begins on Friday morning with a special opening event. Actually, it won't begin until that evening, but you're right about the special event. Traditionally, we've begun with a parade, but this year our opening event will be a special dance performance. And the most exciting part is that the mayor will be one of the dancers. The mayor is a woman of many talents. Cynthia, could you tell our listeners about the price of admission? What will it cost to attend the fair? We're trying to keep the price down as much as possible. A three-day pass is just $25, or you can buy a Saturday or Sunday only pass for $15. The opening event on Friday, the dance performance, doesn't cost anything to attend, and we're hoping a lot of people will come to watch that. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20, Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. Could you tell us about some of the events planned for Saturday and Sunday, the main days of the fair? We have a lot of exciting things planned. There are a number of events, especially for children, including a clown show on Saturday afternoon. On Saturday evening, we've got an event that can be enjoyed by the whole family, a concert by the lake. I'm sure that will be a popular event. Is there anything special planned for Sunday? Yes, a really fun event, and we hope a lot of people will participate. There'll be a singing contest in the afternoon. It's open to everyone at no charge. It doesn't matter whether you're an experienced singer or not. If you've always dreamed of singing on stage, this is your chance. That sounds like a lot of fun. I think it will be. 
I'd also like your listeners to know that besides the special events I've mentioned, there will be things taking place all weekend. For example, at the food court, international food will be served. You'll be able to sample dishes from all around the world. There will also be special games for children at different locations around the fair. Will there be things people can buy, souvenirs, anything like that? We have a large area set aside where there will be crafts for sale. This will be an opportunity to buy many lovely handmade things and to get to know some of our local artists and craftspeople as well. It sounds like there will be a lot of fun for everyone at this year's fair. Thank you for sharing the information with us, Cynthia. Thank you for inviting me. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a talk about societies and events at a university. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi, and welcome to the Students' Union. You've all been here a week now, and hopefully you're finding your feet. You might be wondering what there is to do on campus, apart from going to lectures, doing essays, going out with friends and having late nights. Tonight, you're going to hear about some of the societies, clubs and associations that you can join as a new student as well as the cultural events going on that might interest you. Richard Hillman from Student Services has come along this evening to tell you more. Good evening. It's good to be here and to see you all. But let me say straight away that as students of the university, you are entitled to join free of charge over a hundred societies on the official list. OK, let's begin. I'd be prepared to bet that whatever your interests, you're almost sure to find a club or society here for you. Not surprisingly, there are the long-established clubs that you can find at any university, like the Football Club or the Drama Society, along with a whole range of less usual clubs. For example, the Rock Society. <laughs> we do have a rock climbing club here, but the Rock Society has nothing to do with outdoor activities. It's a music club. That takes me neatly on to the Mountaineering Club, now, it might surprise you that a university in one of the flattest parts of the country has a thriving group of mountaineers. They meet twice a week on Tuesdays from 5 in the afternoon until 10 o'clock in the evening and on Thursday afternoons from 1 o'clock until 5. At their regular meetings, they use the climbing wall, but they also organise trips to real mountains both here and abroad during the vacation. Another rather out-of-the-ordinary society you might like to try is the Dance Club. They meet regularly every Friday. This term, they're running salsa classes. Next term, it's tango. And in the summer, it'll be Scottish dancing. <laughs> Quite a selection. They also put on special events twice a term, either performances by visiting groups or actual dances. Their next event is next Saturday when they're putting on a Latin evening. Go along and try out your samba. At the moment, the dance club is trying to attract new members who may have new ideas for future classes and events. If you're an overseas student, you may find there is a society for students from your country putting on events that will make you feel more at home. The Mexican society, for example, is putting on a special Christmas celebration with traditional Mexican food and drink. And every four weeks, the Hellenic society has a film evening. There are also national societies for Malaysian, Turkish and Chinese students. And don't forget, these societies are open to everyone, 
whether you're from that country or not. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Finally, I'd like to say something about the flourishing arts scene here. This is centred mainly on the Lakeside Theatre and includes a full programme of music, theatre and visual arts. As far as visual arts are concerned, the University Gallery has exhibitions throughout the year. The work of local, national and international artists is regularly on display, as well as exhibitions featuring contemporary architects and designers. The university also has a permanent collection of modern Eastern European art on display. As well as the conventional theatre productions, put on by visiting professional companies and student groups, there is a workshop studio which stages more experimental drama. And finally, music. Concerts catering for a variety of musical tastes include performances by visiting groups, as well as homegrown talent. The university has its own jazz band and choir. As with the other groups I referred to earlier, you're eligible to join these, but of course you will be required to go for an audition. So, there you have it. Obviously I haven't covered everything in this short introduction, but I hope I've given you a flavour of what's on offer here. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear part of a career's advice talk on working freelance. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Working for an employer in a 9 to 5 job has long been the accepted norm. However, this could soon be set to change. A rising level of unemployment, combined with a sense of disillusionment amongst employees with their workaday lives, is at the root of this modern day revolution in the workplace. Now, there is a growing trend amongst people of all ages and from all walks of life to opt for freelance work rather than working for an employer. It sounds a risky option and a potentially stressful one, but on the whole, the benefits of freelancing seem to vastly outweigh those of working for someone else. In fact, Recent research has shown that those who quit their jobs to work for themselves are the country's happiest and most productive workers. A study conducted by Dr Jonathan Sapsed from Brighton University's Business School, in conjunction with the Arts and Humanities Research Council, 
looked at a total of 304 freelancers who were pursuing a range of professions in southern England. They found that, far from struggling to get by, many were not only doing well, but excelling in their new professions. So, what are the advantages of freelancing? Well, there are many. One of the most obvious benefits is not having to be answerable to a boss and having to face criticism or unfair demands. In addition, not being based in an office or shared workplace with competitive or difficult colleagues is another bonus. But what is probably the most attractive pull of working freelance is the freedom to determine your own work schedule. You are no longer at the mercy of a timetable dictated to you by your employer. If you have family commitments, these can easily be fitted around your working hours. Furthermore, if you have an off day one day, it's easy to make up time another day without having to face your employer's wrath when you are being less productive than usual. Those who work in creative and digital industries stand to benefit most from working freelance. In these fields, workers are at liberty to choose their ideal working location as they are not restricted to working in a set place. It really is an ideal lifestyle that many would aspire to if they were more aware of the options available to them. Lastly, to add to an already convincing list of benefits from doing freelance work, there is the financial reward. Freelancers typically work a 38-hour week and earn a median wage of £43,000, well above the national average of £25,000, and are happier than other workers. It seems that people are now catching on to the myriad benefits that come with working as a freelancer. Currently, there are about 31 million people in work in Britain, and already 4.6 million are self-employed, thereby displaying the vitality of the freelance economy. In fact, so popular is freelancing becoming that it has even been suggested that the government needs to devise a new tax and other policies to support freelancers. Freelancing would seem to be the future of employment and the way forward. It is certainly well worth considering freelancing if you are doubtful about committing to working in a structured environment and would like more freedom and autonomy in your work. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to your IELTS listening answer sheet. <laughs>